everybody, and welcome to another edition of Romance Ramblings, Uncut and Off the Cuff Musings with Ava Stone and... Derek and I, Catania. And tonight we have a guest with us. Introduce yourself. Heather McCollum. Hey, Heather. Welcome. Hi, Heather. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Welcome. Here, happy to have you. <laughs> we had to reschedule this, I know, so... Oh. Oh, yeah. What happened last Saturday? I think I was the one that the one to say I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. I, I still, you know, took a shower, put on makeup. My husband was happy. Good. Good. And I just put on a historical costume of tiara and I called it a day. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't shower every day. So I'm just going to go with that. Like I'm, yeah, the they didn't even shower every month. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> I have a lot of room then because you I have there's a lot of, of wiggle room. You know, I watched a, an interesting special once. There were some anthropologists who decided to try two different uh, ways of staying clean or not staying clean. So one of them did not shower for, you know, they did not bathe for, I don't know, it was like three months or something, but they would change their, their, um, the smock they wore every day, their linens were always clean. And then they would do the comb, the very fine comb through their hair. Then the other person, they could shower or bathe whenever they want, but they wore the same clothes every day. And what they found was that the person who didn't bathe but changed their linens every day smelled fine. The person that didn't change their clothes but they bathed very quickly was very stinky. No way. <laughs> yeah. So what I think they're thinking is that, you know, those big gowns and stuff, as long as they change that smock underneath every day and had a clean linen, that really the body odor was not that bad. That's amazing. Well, you say that, but there was no deodorant. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's what they were used to. Really bad. <laughs> I'm in that phase of life where I get out of the shower, and if I don't immediately put deodorant on, forget it. I already <laughs> smell. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> and I used to be able to go, like, really without deodorant for a couple of days, no issues. Now I'm just stank. Uh, you are in Florida now, so was that? Yes, I was going to say that. <laughs> no, th this was also in Florida. I'm I, I think it's just since I turned 40. Oh. Um, <laughs> something happened. Yeah. Getting old sucks is what happens. Indeed. I know. I just, I just shower every day. Just even if I put my hair up, I don't wash my hair every day. I do that every other day. But then I just try to because, you know, you know, yeah, as you get older, what is it? Your body's slowly decaying. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh. well, it's been great talking to you, Heather. I don't know. <laughs> And that's all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, no, just kidding. So Heather, <laughs> Heather, um, you have overcome like a huge obstacle in your life. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, the fun thing about last Saturday was that I was celebrating nine, nine years of uh, surviving ovarian cancer. Yay! So technically, it was also uterine cancer, but that was the easy one to fix. They just found it starting in my uterus, and when they were taking that out, it was gone. But ovarian cancer is very different because it's like a snow globe where you shake it up, and the cells spit off, and they just go everywhere in your abdomen. So it's not like you have to hit a lymph node to spread. It just spreads. Oh, wow. So because of that, ovarian cancer is the deadliest of the GYN cancers. So I was given, um, it was like, I just, I, I felt like uh, I was bloated, but I had just turned 40. So I thought, oh, I'm getting fat. So I did more sit-ups and then I got a pain in my side. I thought, oh, I pulled something. Um, and then I felt like I was getting a bladder infection and um, I didn't go to the doctor because I had three kids who has time to go to the doctor. Um, right. It's funny with kids, it's like, they sneeze, and then I take them to the doctor. But for me, it had I had a three-strike rule. I had to have three things wrong. <laughs> so 
So I was playing soccer and I got hit with the soccer ball really, really hard in my hand. And we thought I broke my hand, so I had to go to the doctor. So I mentioned it. There was a tumor in me this big and it was spreading already and it hadn't been there five months earlier at my annual GYN visit. Oh my God. Five months to this big and spreading. So, um, so yeah, I had stage 2C ovarian cancer and was given between a 57% to 70% chance to live five years. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, 15 months of chemo um, on a clinical trial. So it was five months of really, really kick your butt chemo and then another 10 months of where my hair started to grow back chemo and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was really hard and I'm lucky that I was able to... Um, use my writing like I couldn't write any fiction at all it just was too taxing but my husband very quickly realized that I was miserable not writing anything so he said just write what you know what you're going through so I blogged through all of that and um, I'm so glad I did because the chemicals they put in you I don't remember a lot of stuff um, but there was such heartfelt real honest authentic struggling to survive sort of blog posts that I wrote. So I think I have almost a hundred blog posts um, on that I've written, that I wrote during that time. And then in the first six months of recovery. So someday I will put that into a book on, you know, um, how to survive chemo the best possible way. Yeah. Wow. I was really fortunate. Um, so yeah, it's, it, and you know, the thing is, is, it could come back, you know, I'm at nine years, so that's really good. Um, if you, if I make it to 10 years, which I will, um, I'm considered cured, uh, but uh, ovarian cancer has a way of sending sleeper cells out into your body and they just sit dormant until they just suddenly aren't dormant anymore. So I've met women, I've met countless women who are all different is where some they should have died, but it, it, the chemo worked. And then other women who were only stage one who are now battling a recurrence, which once you have a recurrence, it's really, it's a chronic condition. You will never cure. Yeah. And right. you have like two years. Wow. So wow. that's sort of like this, I feel like I have this, um, I don't know, death stalking me a little bit. It's what it feels like. Right. Uh, the farther you get out from it, the easier it gets, but sometimes it gets really hard to, to beat that back and right. go on. And um, for anyone who's dealing with something like that, because there's a lot of people who are, um, one of the things that works for me, I'll just throw this out there, is I try to imagine myself, I came up with a really good vision of me as an elderly, healthy woman like 80 year old woman, I've got long white hair that's braided and I'm wearing a cardigan sweater and pants um, that are like, that have that big elastic waistband. <laughs> <laughs> I've really got details and I'm standing like a house in Maine on the ocean and so I'm standing there and I've got sea glass in my pockets that we found on the beach because we always do that and I can hear my grandchildren, which I don't have any, I've got kids, but I hear my grandchildren laughing, running up to me and digging around in my pockets for their sea glass as their treasure. So I imagine that. And then I tell myself, when I get to 80, I'm going to be really pissed at myself for mourning and wasting this day about something that never happened. Right. Yeah. It never came back. And yet I was worried about it all day. So my 80 year, year old self is, is a tough cookie and she'd be really pissed. So that, that <laughs> get over there, like imagining myself over it and, and living a healthy long life and then not wasting the day mourning something that hasn't happened. So anyways. That's awesome. That is. I love that. And we are very glad that you're <laughs> still here with us. Yes, I am too. I am too. It's, it's. <laughs> really tough um especially when you have little kids i had a four-year-old a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old at the time so scary it's very scary wakes up in the middle of the night crying and asks you who are you going to play with in heaven mommy if i'm not there with you 
it's oh, really good that it was oh. three in the morning because I said, um, I guess I'll play with other dead people, honey. <laughs> That's amazing. No. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. So how are you handling the, uh, the quarantine? <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm an introvert for the most part. I'm kind of on the line, but I, I am okay sort of being in my own little space and writing and stuff, um, but I, but my kids, my two kids that were at college have come home. And so I'm not just in my own little space. There's people. There's people here. <laughs> the other one's not, my 13 year old's not in school. And um, so yeah, it's a little bit, and my mother lives down the street. And so we're trying to keep her safe too. Um, and so my husband does the shopping because I went once and totally freaked out the masks. It was like apocalyptic. And then we had to disinfect everything. And it just was, I was a mess the rest of the day. So, it's a lot. um, he does that and he brings it in and we all sort of attack it with wipes and stuff. Um, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that we have the social media to stay connected. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that they've been able to get the word out because in 1918, when the Spanish flu was out there, they didn't have a way to connect and to tell people. Right. So many, I mean, so many people died. I mean, there have been plagues in history, but this I think is the first time where we've been able to get the word out and say, this is what you need to do to stay safe. And, and so, it's a very interesting time in our history. Yeah. It's true. These kids will always remember that, you know, mm -hmm. they're, for the rest of their lives, they'll be, remember that time we were home from school, like forever. <laughs> just, <laughs> we didn't go back to the next year <laughs> and everybody wore masks and everything. Like that's going to be a memory that, you know, yeah. yeah. And I think it's going to change. It's going to change things. A bunch of kids are going to realize that they can do school online. You know, I, I think it's gonna, it's gonna up homeschooling maybe, and maybe up uh, college. Like my son may not go back to a campus next year. He can do things here. Yeah. Um, so there's, I think it's gonna really change a lot of things. I think so too. When you think about college too, I mean, that opens so many doors for people, um, mm -hmm. you know, who maybe couldn't, can't afford to go because housing costs too much and they don't have a car or for whatever reason, they can't leave home. I mean, I know we have online schools, but for real college to start doing distance learning, I think is going to be transformational mm -hmm. for the education in, in our country. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think so. And I, I think it just even like, I have friends who are out of state, but I wouldn't necessarily FaceTime them and call them that way and like make dinner with them. They're doing it on their end in a different state and I'm doing it here. But now I'm trying to do that. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that before, right? You know, you just wait till you're somehow visit each other. But right. I'm almost connecting more than I am forced to stay home. That's kind of weird, but. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Now, how is your mom doing? I know you said she lives up the street. Do, are you staying away from each other? We, we are not letting her grocery shop or any, go to any stores, which is killing her, I think. Um, <laughs> she and I uh, walk every morning. I take my dog, and she walks like about four feet behind me. That we're not, because the sidewalk isn't six feet. It's only right. To each other so she stays behind me and I sort of stay in front of her and we just walk and talk for a good you know 40 minutes every morning just uh so she knows what's going on and then we just had Easter dinner in our backyard and she came over and sat apart but she got to watch the Easter egg hunt and all yeah. that stuff because we were outside that's why we did it tonight because tomorrow's supposed to rain yeah. we couldn't have her over then so we're doing more thank goodness it's not like February you know. True. Yeah. What part of the country are you in, Heather? Uh, North Carolina. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. yeah. I always forget that. 
Well, your mom was so sweet. I really enjoyed meeting her last year. Yes, she'll be back with me. Good. I can't get dressed without her. Like, <laughs> I her stuff off on my taxes and pay for it because she's my dresser. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Especially with that Queen Elizabeth dress. I cannot wait to wear it, but it is... It really needs two people to dress me, but I think mom can handle it. But she well, had to take you used to have dressers, right? I mean, that was a, somebody's job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. That's why the costumes were like that. Oh, so yeah. before I forget, let's, let me show the graphic because, you know, I will forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> um, there we go. Here we are. Another, another Island, Island, Island Conquest. Yeah. Island <laughs> Conquest. <laughs> Is that a new one? It's coming out April um, 28th, and it was supposed to be, I mean, it still is, it's my first print first book. Like, it's supposed to be in Target and Barnes and & Noble and all these places that no one will be. Oh, <laughs> no. I am still going to Target. <laughs> I think I'm going to go, <clears throat> and if I see it at Target, I'll have my mask on, I'm going to go and move it over to where all the toilet paper normally is. <laughs> Everybody goes. No, right? you don't want them to use your book as toilet paper. I feel no. like <laughs> if they buy it, <laughs> do whatever you want with it. <laughs> do whatever you want with it. That yeah. is so funny. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so anyways, yes, it's coming out the end of April. And, uh, you know, it, it's great. It's the first book in a new series. It's um, Scottish historical, takes place during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, um, but it's way up in the north of Scotland. And uh, so King James is on the throne in Scotland. And the, uh, the whole premise, there's four books, and it's about four brothers. And they were raised by a father who's a little wacko, and he raised them to be the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So the uh -huh. first one is conquest, the second one is war, the third one is justice, and the fourth one is death. And so the four brothers are introduced in the f first book, and the first book is obviously about conquest, the first brother. So, cool. Uh, so that's what, and, and the theme of this book is, um, you know, he's been raised to conquer everything. Conquest and conquer, it's everything. But love requires giving, where conquest is taking. So. Uh -huh. There's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's very insightful, Heather. I love it. <laughs> so, but anyways, I love these. These brothers are awesome because they're big, brawny, you know, alpha, alpha males raised as the four horsemen. Um, so they're they're a lot of fun to write. Cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So <laughs> hopefully it will sell okay, even if it's in the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Our fingers are crossed for you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for being with us and looking at the time. And we are actually out of time. So it, I feel like these go by like in the blink of an eye. But yeah, they do. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being with us. We really appreciate you chatting with us today. And sure. Out. Thanks for having me. And I guess we just also mentioned the three of us are doing the historical romance writer Easter egg hop on Facebook. Yeah. If you ever, if you, if any of you watching wants to search for eggs or anything like that from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, it's a $150 gift card that we're going to give away to somebody who does all the thing. You can safely participate in the hunt in the pandemic in your house. Yeah. I've gotten tons of entries. Well, not tons, but I've gotten a lot of entries today. That's good. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Well, we will talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody.